Jesus Christ is born today. Alleluia. Be born in our hearing, Lord Jesus, and open our lives to you. Our word, our light, our life. For the mission of the church, to listen and follow the word made flesh. For our soul, for our social, economic, and political life, to reflect the light of Christ and build, sustain, and protect life of every kind in our world. For all who proclaim the gospel and for ourselves to proclaim Christ faithfully. For all who are left behind, isolated, harmed, or unwelcome by the world. And for all who are sick. We pray today, O oh God, that Emmanuel, God be with us. We thank you, Lord, for this time, for this Christmas 2022, oh God, that your light will continue to so shine among men. These things I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. 2022 Western New York style. That's right. Take a deep breath with me. Exhale. I know the weather outside is frightful, but God is still on the throne. And today I just want to give you some words of encouragement this Christmas. Amen. Our scripture today is from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I'm reading from the CEB version. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God, and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell the light, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth, resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Listen, I just want to talk to you a few minutes from the John scripture. You know, reading these scriptures um, in John and um, Luke, Matthew, the gospels that tell the story of Jesus's birth, um, there are a couple of words that are used, and one of them is do not be afraid. It is a greeting that we hear several times um, throughout the Christian, the Christmas holiday. It is how the angel Gabriel first addressed Mary. And when he came to tell her that she will bear the savior of all nations. Can you imagine that? Be not afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. 
This is how the angel of the Lord addresses the shepherds when they were in the fields tending their flock on the first Christmas night. Be not afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. In fact, three times in the first two chapters of Luke gospel, we find the angel of the Lord telling somebody to not be afraid. And about 10 times throughout the four gospels of Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, we find Jesus himself telling people, do not be afraid. And I will say of all these messages we hear this Christmas season, besides the birth of Christ, it's an important message here. Don't be afraid. No, you will probably never see it on the front of a, a postcard or a Hallmark card because in Christmas, um, it's usually not associated, right? But, <clears throat> excuse me, it is truly one of the most important and comforting messages that we hear during the Christmas season. It's right there in the word of God. Don't be afraid. There are many things in our society that can set us on edge, that can make us worry or be concerned, especially in a year when we have seen so many things affect so many people in a year when we've seen so many young people stand up for justice across the world. In the year where we've seen COVID-19, the flu, um, RSV, cancer, and other viruses and diseases claim the lives of so many people. In the year where church attendance continues to decline, hmm. And subsequently, so it seems our love for one another at times seems to be on a decline. In a year where we've seen inflation and, and poverty rise, and we've seen a rise of employment, but a decrease in unemployment, that's good news too. But when we see these things occurring, when we see things that may cause anxiety or concern about our future, Gabriel's Christmas greeting should be ringing in our ears. Louder than anything that the world can say, don't be afraid. Be not afraid because your God is in control. Be not afraid because your God has brought brought you and, and paid for your eternal life through Jesus Christ. So that no matter what happens in today, through the gift of the Messiah, our tomorrow hmm, will be a blessing and, and we will have an assurance of God's eternal kingdom for us. Don't be afraid because God is still at work doing all that is occurring. Yes, there, there was this blizzard, this devastating blizzard that went across the Northeast and right here in good old Western New York. Snow, wind, devastation death. But the good thing is it didn't end there. The good thing is we have people that were in position who brought other people in like the National Guard to come in to help to, <clears throat> excuse me, offer rides to shelters and different places for people that were stranded um, in their cars, for people that needed to get to the hospital. People stepped in and they stepped up. Neighbors opened their doors to people that were stranded and couldn't reach their destination. Buffalo, the city of 
good neighbors. This time was pretty neighborly these past few days. I remember being in the blizzard of 77 as a child. This kind of reminds me of that. And then the same thing happened. People opened their doors and their homes and their businesses to help other people. And when we do this, do you realize we're offering hope and God? Yes, we are offering Christ to those through our actions of being nice and fulfilling the need that has, aris that has arisen. You know, we sometimes see the negative and the, the catastrophic of events. But you know, when these things occur, they should be drawing us closer to God. You should remember that God is at work in every situation that comes up. Every situation. We should not be saying that we can't win or lose hope. Uh, why? Because the word tells us, Emmanuel, God is with us. You know, I think that uh, through the birth of the Messiah, God has shown us that he will always love us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will never leave us hanging out there trying to figure things out on our own. Even though sometimes it feels like we're in it by ourselves, remember we are not. God is right there with us, helping us, leading us, guiding us in a way that we need to go. Sometimes it's just a matter of stopping and listening. Sometimes it's a matter of stopping and moving out of our own way and allowing God to speak to our souls to get out the way. You know, God created the heavens and the earth. If he did that, I believe he can help us with these situations and these things that are happening in the world today that seems to distract us and pull us away from where God wants us to go. You know, there's a song, um, Great Are You the Lord. And it says, you give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. So be not afraid. Don't be afraid because the darkness did not overcome the light. As our gospel lesson for today tells us many times throughout history, the darkness has tried to conquer the light of the world. Many times it has looked like the darkness has won or is winning and the light will be extinguished. But it's not true. It looked that way to the disciples on Good Friday when Christ hung bleeding on the cross and then was laid in the tomb. It looked that way that hope was lost and that the darkness um, had just totally overcome that death and evil had won. But lo and behold, on that glorious morning, the light shone once again, brighter than it had shone ever before. We showed this world and the disciples that nothing can conquer the light. Nothing. Nothing can stop the light of the almighty God. The light that God sent into this world on this first Christmas through his son, Jesus Christ, the light of God 
shown through Christ Jesus, our Lord, shines still just as bright today, piercing the darkness of our world because the darkness did not, cannot, and will not ever overcome the light. As Christians, we shall always remember the light will always shine, which means God's promises, God's grace, God's gift of eternal life will never be extinguished. So we cannot give up hope. We cannot look out and say, well, you know, I give up. We re need to realize that the light cannot be stopped. And neither should we. The gift, the gift of Christmas, the gift of the Messiah, the gift of God's only son shows us that the darkness did not and cannot overcome the light. The light still shines brightly in our society today. And we need to keep shining. We, the representatives of Christ here on earth, we need to shine. The birth of the Messiah into our world shows that God does not sit watching us from afar. But our God is right here in the middle, right in the midst of all we do. His light shines in every corner, every place, offering us hope when it appears to be hopeless. He offers us joy. When we are in despair, he offers us peace. During confusion and uncertainty, the light that shone forth from the manger over 2,000 years ago, calling the shepherds, guiding the wise men announcing the birth of the king shines just as brightly today in our churches and in our world. Even though attendance might be down, the light is still shining even more brightly. In the hospital room, when the doctor says, I'm sorry, it's terminal. It still shines just as brightly in our lives, even though there is uncertainty and confusion from time to time, the light still shines and always will shine just as brightly into this world. And we must be willing to look for it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The good news is the light, the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Today, this Christmas, December 25th, 2022, is still shining brightly. For you, for me, let your light so shine for all to see. Let your light, the light of Christ, lead you and guide you along the way. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to conclude with this. We have seen his glory. The glory as of God's only begotten son. Full of grace and truth. How great our joy. Go forth and proclaim it. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. The sun is here. Amen. God bless you.